Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of settling for mediocre are over. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to Project Relationship. Hey, everybody. So we're going to get to our episode in just a second, but I wanted to make sure that you heard about my latest offering because people have been asking, how can I work with Jolie? And I would love to work with you, but you all have such individual relationships. So I would love to see you pop into my next free live training. It's the best way. Yeah. My it's eyes, right, directly, your relationship. These are small intimate groups. We're just going to meet in Zoom and we're going to talk about what it is that you want and how you can get it. Go to my website, joliehamilton.com. Click on the work with Jolie tab. You'll see some live trainings and master classes coming up. Grab a spot at the next one and we'll see you in there. Hi, and welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. And we're going to talk about keeping sex hot over the long term. Yes. I'm Not... psyched for this episode because... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm psyched for this episode because it's a question that I get asked in obscure ways. Often people will sort of approach this sideways or they'll sidle up or... It's, it's a tough one because everyone seems to feel like their situation is entirely unique. Mm -hmm. But yeah, in right. fact, after you listen to enough stories, it becomes really clear that in fact, there are just, there are, there are patterns. Yeah. There are patterns that play out. Um, yes, your story is unique. And there are paths out of a boring or um, sort of ennui, like sexual ennui. Yeah. So I think what we're we're going to do is talk a little bit about some of the things that can get that they can end you up in a place of ennui. Right. Let's actually some, start there. Yeah, I think that's let's start a good idea. there. So, um, because usually I would say let's start with at the beginning with like, well, what's hot sex? Hot sex is whatever you define it. Yeah, to we be. can't tell you what that I is. I don't know. Make a list. Um, but I can say this: you'll know it when you feel it. Yep. Right. And you might not line up with your partner. So you might not be feeling you're having a hot sex life and they are. And so there might be a discrepancy there. That's a different question. We're going to do an episode on desire discrepancy um, separate from this. We'll touch on it a little bit, but that has a whole issue. One of the things about desire discrepancy, though, or keeping sex hot in the long term is that there are some really common things that happen over the course of our lives that create they disrupt yep. they disrupt a pattern so imagine you're having what is a hot sex life for you it's happening at a frequency that works for you it's happening at an intensity that works for you um there's a there's a uh, newness there's a, a certain there's a comfort and an intimacy that works for you and there's also a curious uh uh novelty novelty yeah like a word. sense yep. of novelty yep. and comfort invention. and novelty and things yeah, are going everything great get all the stuff and then along comes, oh, you know, grief, grief. the loss of someone, um, the birth of someone, a child, um, change of, of job, change of career, change of school status, mental health stuff, just a change in, in the, the way that you're feeling yourself. Um, burnout. Burnout shows up. And I mean, that, so that's a mental health issue, but I, I think it, be it bears noting all on its own. Just plain old being you know, burnt right. out. You know, a pandemic. Oh, a pandemic that could come along. It's, sure. What are the yeah, What are the odds? But could be. Uh, yeah. Um. A, along with a change, an internal change. Yep. Sometimes we're we have these things happen and we can't locate a real source, but something has just shifted. Yeah. Um. Menopause comes along. Oh, sure. And changes things. Um. Okay. So lots of things. There's but lots disruptors, of disruptors. Things that they could change. disrupt what seemed like it was working. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that people talk to me about frequently is, I thought it was working, and now I get I find myself caught in a loop of, oh, I don't actually know. Was it working? Wasn't it working? Oh, I thought yeah. it was okay. 
Maybe it's never been okay. Uh, so the first thing I think it's important to do when you're asking yourself, how do I, how do I get a better sex life? How do I have a hotter sex life is don't panic. <laughs> Just yeah, a right. nice, simple, don't panic. It's not, it, it's not a tragedy. It's it not happens. a tragedy. It's it a happens. Common... And, and it's not, the hotness of your sex life does not actually hinge on someone else. Thank Surprise. God. And thank God. Plot twist for me. I was in my first marriage, I was not having the the full experience that I wanted. And it's not because we were having no sex. Um, it's just that it just wasn't it wasn't as ramped up as I really wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was noisy about that. But it was when I realized I had full autonomy to create a the sex life I wanted. That's when I realized, oh, I have agency. I am part of this relationship, That's a and things great started thing changing. To know. Yeah. And what happened was actually um, so. The timeline is a little rough because, in fact, for me, I realized I had agency and I could change a lot more of that, the frequency and the intensity. Yeah. Um, and then a few months later, I had a sizzling moment with you. And then I wound up ending my marriage, not at the low spot of our sexual connection, not at all. Mm. At, in fact, the high point, um, possibly I awakened something in myself. Possibly it was just what was meant to be. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But not panicking about, about what's going on lets you remember that you are part of your relationship system. You're part of it, which means you get to change and experiment and have conversations. And that it returns to you a sense of having agency. And that, that is key. Yeah. So you had experienced an unsatisfying sex my, life. My first marriage. But you didn't. It, but I didn't. Do the thing. I, I at no point used my agency to claim a desire for things to be different like just that simple which is rough because that means your marriage actually ended with never having addressed that yeah, it never got resolved it never never, never even brought up right and yeah. so what a bummer you don't even mm -hmm. know what sex life you might have that's had that's right um and, and that, that was makes... all that that part of that was all on me it's um, um, without the that sense of agency so so don't panic but also don't stick your head in the sand yes no don't so do that. i think the next thing to think about is what how am i going to decide that it's time to get help with this because we're going to go through some things that you can do on your own but i mean <laughs> this is what i do professionally i talk to people right. about how to take an average relationship and make it phenomenal and we made a, a list of things that can disrupt and um those were mostly external factors but in fact, there are internal factors that can happen too. When, a whole bunch of them. Um, there are relational issues that can happen between you. One of them came up and and popped you right in the, right in the head once. We were going along having a perfectly hot sex life, but you were you were unemployed for a summer. Oh yeah. Right. And um, our sex dropped off for I don't know a couple of weeks, and you panicked. This is you where had, the don't panic you comes felt, in. Yeah. And, and luckily I, did. I didn't ridiculous. panic at the same time yeah. because you panicked and you were like, oh my God, everything's changed. My libido's gone. I've hit, you know, I'm in my early fifties now. It's never going to be the same. Ah. I was like, um, it sex every day all summer. So I think you're probably fine. The fun part about that was going, oh yeah, <laughs> everything I just said was completely crazy, but, but it happened. But you felt it I as felt a very it. Yes, real internal shift. And I see that in people all the time. We tell ourselves stories and those stories have immense power. Oh, yeah. So do. don't panic and acknowledge what you're feeling without deciding that it is like true and fixed and the only way to look at what's going on. Yeah. Um, okay. So now how do we figure so out the, whether we need help? Right. Because sometimes we do need some help. For me, one of the, the keys is to recognize when 
when I can't take action myself anymore. Like if I'm feeling so stuck okay. that I'm just yeah. like spiraling inward and I can complain about what I'm not getting, but I'm not having any productive conversations. Mm -hmm. um, or I'm complaining to my friends, but not to the person I want to have sex with. Oh, yeah. So um, obstacles to communicating together. Obstacles to talking to the person you want to have sex with. If, if they're, if they're so severe that you're not getting anywhere, it's like a good time sex to ask for help. Sex is better when you talk about it. Full yeah. stop. Mm -hmm. Sex is better when you can talk about it. You, there's always, so if your sex life is super hot right now, you can still up that by learning how to talk about it differently. But if productive conversations, in other words, conversations that lead you in a direction where you feel like, oh, okay, we're getting on the same page and we're making progress towards something that is collaboratively yeah. um, juicy and fun and hot, and we, something we want. If you're not able to do that, now's the time to bring in a counselor or a coach. Now's the time to reach out and, and contact someone. And one of the first ways people do that is turn to a book. Um, so I wrote a book. I have a book called Project Relationship. It's not just about sex. There is a chapter. Chapter eight is about sex. I I would highly recommend going through the, the action steps in it. It's very straightforward and simple. Um, another great book is Come As You Are by oh, Emily yeah, Nagoski. A... Uh, if you yeah. haven't read it, uh, there's a newly released updated um, edition that came out in 2021, I believe, or maybe the end of 2020 totally worth getting and worth getting the updated version. Um, Emily made some exquisitely important um, updates, really brought, uh, shown a new light on moving toward pleasure, moving toward pleasure as a way to um, return to relating, return to mm. connecting and get the sex that we that we long for, that we want. So those are those are a couple of options for before calling a coach or a counselor. But also, don't don't be shy. There are people out there who have spent decades learning about this so that we can help you. It's good to ask for help. Um, a lot of people will show up, at, talk to me, and and I and I find out that I'm like the first real conversations they've had. Yeah. About sex, like real conversations. Well, I, and you know, I some, never some had any in my first marriage. Right. And just never, or with anyone else. Or not, not, yeah, like, not with anyone. So you hadn't had mm -hmm. any. So I was, you were 42 yeah. when we first started interacting in that way. There were those first conversations. Yeah. And that's actually a pretty average age for when I first talked to somebody. Somewhere, somewhere between um, early 30s and early 50s is when I tend to hear from people. Don't be embarrassed to ask for help. And if if the first help you ask for doesn't work, don't panic. Finding a counselor or a coach who's the right fit for you, that's a bit of a process too. And there are lots of books. And there are lots of books and there are lots of podcasts. There mm -hmm. are lots of places to turn for advice and help. So we are, in fact, but in a golden age of information. But sometimes you really need someone to look. Oh, yeah. There is yeah. something really invaluable about having someone else get eyes and a heart uh, yes, into the, into the heart space of your relating yep. um, that's transformational. Yeah. I, I know Agreed. that word's overused, but it's, it's true. But okay. It, well, it is. So don't be shy. That's a real thing. Now let's get into the juicy details. Yeah, okay. What do we do so. about it? Because sometimes there are some really simple, straightforward things that we just haven't addressed. Um, erotic energy it needs oxygen. And that's that's from Esther Perel's work. We see that um, in a lot of places. We see just the idea that um, Jack Morin writes about it in The Erotic Mind, too. The, the idea that eroticism, it needs, just like a fire needs oxygen, it needs oxygen. It needs room to grow and, and, and to bloom. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you need other sexual partners. So sometimes so, the idea of novelty comes up and because I, I coach for non-monogamy so frequently, people assume that that's what I'm going to prescribe. I do not think that consensual non-monogamy is a fix. It's just not. What it is is a choice that you can make to act in this way or you can do other things. Being creative in your monogamy is a valid mm, choice okay, as well. Yeah. Being creative about what you're doing and... 
Yeah. So that means we're going to have to have conversations. Yeah. Conversations. Talking. What is this oxygen you talk about? So the oxygen is often about returning ourselves to our erotic desire. Like sex can become really flat and and very uh, mechanical. Like I'm going to have sex. I'm going to engage in these acts that I call sex. And that oxygen is returning the curiosity and the, I don't know. And the, and oh, the, um, okay. yeah. yeah, it's, it's simply returning to a state of let's go explore. Let's find out what feels good. What, what does my body long for? What does my body long to receive? But also what does my body long to give? And mm. how do I talk through that? How do I negotiate with you? Um, an example, you know, in, in, in a very simple way would be, if I am feeling a longing to touch your chest and I, and I can recognize in myself that I'm, that I'm longing for that right there, I have a huge amount of information. I, I can do a lot of stuff with that. I could ask if I can touch your chest yeah. uh, or because of the way we interact in our household, it would be completely reasonable for me to simply reach over and touch your chest. I can also take 10 minutes and go lie down and just use that desire, that longing to touch your chest. I can use oh. it as uh, the starting point for wandering through my intimate landscape and finding out what, what do I want and what else do I want? What else mm -hmm. do I want? And some of the things that we want aren't things that we want to act out. Sometimes we just want to yeah. dig into the fantasy. Mm -hmm. We want to explore. And this is where I think getting to know what we want erotically and then getting to be able to share those wants, it requires us to be different. It re uh, okay, let me put that differently. It, there is a huge opportunity if we can allow ourselves to be different from each other. Okay, yeah. So you are not me. Creating an overlapping erotic story does not mean wanting exactly the same things. Mm -hmm. It means co-creating something that suits In us which both. We both get what yeah. we are looking for. And sometimes that actually means or shutting you find my, new things. shutting up. Sometimes I need to press my shut up button uh -huh. because I talk a lot. Um, shocking. I'm sure everyone is just shocked to hear that. But I so I'll talk a lot. So if I'm talking and you're and you're um, internally fantasizing about something else and you haven't been able to verbalize it yet, you like you might not get the collaborative experience yep. that you want. So one of the things to do is simply ex start establishing new norms, norms that allow you to to discuss and describe things that you wouldn't say outside of the erotic environment. Yeah, new norms. And you were talking earlier about the oxygen and about um, looking at each other in, in a new light, sort of. And I wanted to say something that has been really worked well for me, which is giving and receiving the permission to check in about something that we should already know about, which like what I think I already know about you. Yeah. Can you give me an example? You can use me. It's fine. Um, so, um, yeah, I don't know if I can pull an example right out of the air here, but it's something along the lines of, um, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. My mind's gone blank. So, okay. I'll, uh, I'll maybe do you can example. help me out. <laughs> Absolutely. I've known you a long time. I know a lot of things that you like to have happen to your body. I know a particular way that you like to have your nipples touched. Mm -hmm. But if I never ask, if I never revisit that, if I simply just like, okay, I figured out this way that you like to have your nipples touched. And I feel like I should just know that. And I never revisit it. And I never simply say, does that feel good? Do you want this? Is there anything else I could do? Yeah. And that's okay, not so much. I mean, there is, yeah. there's a consent issue in there. Absolutely. But there's also just this. This is a learning. Of, uh, I, I upbeating. need to give myself permission to be in a space of not knowing because you could have discovered new things. We yeah. could go discover something together. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we're talking about physical acts, this could be, well, I don't, I don't know. Well, how about if you, we'll try something and we'll see how that goes. And we might find that there's a different, um, a different, pressure that you like or a different um swirling pattern that you like swirling yeah. patterns fun to say <laughs> um so 
letting myself off the hook and letting myself not need to be the expert on how to get you off. Yeah, right. Because you have a body and it changes and you have a psyche and erotic pattern and that changes. I mean, we've seen a huge change in your erotic pattern yep. just in the last week. Yep. An enormous change. Mm -hmm. And so now there's like a whole new set of activities that go with that erotic change. Yep. And, and a I whole need new to... set of discussions and right. fantasies and all kinds of things. But I have to let myself not be the expert on Ken. Right. Right. And not pretend that that makes me. I, I mean, it's funny how we write these stories for well, ourselves. But it we is. Do. And here's the thing. So, yes, we're talking about this sort of this discovery and the, the checking in to see if this still works when I know that it has worked. Does it still work? You'll find things that you thought were working oh, that yeah. haven't been okay. by doing that too. How I, to that keep has happened to me. That, yeah. That's super important. Let's let's revisit. Sometimes we get into a pattern and yeah. <laughs> um, we just keep doing the same thing. And at the beginning, it seems like it's okay. And then before you know it, yep. you've just been... This isn't great, but I'll put up with it. And, and I'm sure it's okay. 20 years from now, you're still getting oh, that same thing. <laughs> and it becomes awkward. Maybe this so we're going to do an episode on um, giving feedback yeah. about sex. And we'll get into that in more detail. But there is a space of not knowing. Yeah. Simply being in the not knowing with each other, in the, in the space of discovery. And that's where I think a lot of oxygen can be brought in. Now, at the same time that we want that oxygen and that novelty, um, when we talk about keeping sex hot over the long term, yeah. most people who want that for themselves are talking about, well, I want to feel a sense of security. I want to feel safe. And that's how I could feel hotness. This is a challenging balance, but it is not out of reach, actually. Um, to feel safe and secure while also exploring for me is about getting on the same side, getting, oh yeah, getting mm -hmm. so that we are walking down an exploratory set of paths together and apart, but we're exploring the same area together. Yeah. And that's rather I... than me trying to figure you out as if you are, there's almost a combative stance that we could take Yeah, where like your body, your body is a wonderland and I'm going to figure out how it works. <laughs> I hate it. that song. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And that's why I mentioned the permission, because that combativeness can come up if I say, oh, so, you know, would you like me to do this thing? If the response is, you know, I like that. Oh, yeah. that gets in the way. Yep. And so we if have we that give... trouble because sometimes uh -huh. I feel like you aren't like you don't know me. And that, but that's a story I'm telling myself. Yeah. The story that I'm that I tell myself when I say, you know, I like that yep. would be. It's, it's a story of misery that I'm choosing to write for myself because if I instead assume goodwill, assume that what you were yes. trying to do was explore with me. Assume that we're on the same page. Assume that we are, together. that we're taking this adventure together. Mm -hmm. Every time we all overlap yeah. our erotic stories, well, yeah, sometimes you're going to ask questions that seem like you already know the answer to. Yeah. One of the things that happens there though, and this is this is the best case scenario when I'm, when I'm in my best place is I'm like, "Ooh, let me check. I don't actually know." Yeah. Hold on. Yep. Keep going. Yeah, exactly. And yes. And now Yes, I do. And now we're or, onto the feedback. Oh my god. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out that's not what I want. I yeah, I discovered so I had I had a great um exchange with somebody last week. It, oh, it was beautiful. It was, it was just a short fling and it was really lovely. Um, and I discovered something that I like that I didn't know I liked. Hooray. So I brought that Good news. back yeah. and, and just, and just asked you to do it. I didn't say like, Hey, this person did this thing to me and I want you to do it now. What? But I mean, you probably could have put two and two together, I might have. but, <laughs> but the thing is, it was, I was in that I got, I let myself be in beginner's mind when I was having sex with this person last week. I, I, I entered yeah. beginner's mind, mm -hmm. let myself be in that place. And when she did this thing, I was like, oh, 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 I, I do like that. Okay, cool. Awesome. Let me see how that works with another lover. Let uh -huh. me see how that works in another place. If you're having sex with multiple partners, this is one way. But 
I could have equally figured this, this particular act can be done with a toy. There are some specific toys. I own some of these specific toys. Um, I love toys, but they're, and they're not the end all be all, but I like having a variety of them. Well, I could have made the, the, if I had entered with beginner's mind, I might have made the leap to say, oh, it turns out I do like um, this particular kind of suction in this particular way. I do like it. And then I could have asked you. Right. Um, and it wasn't until it was an embodied person interacting with me that I really yeah, realized, that, oh, that yep, yep, Let yep. it connect together. So you mentioned comfort and novelty. Yes. Good stuff. And you're talking about toys, which... You know, and they can they can go either way. Like a new toy is novel. After a while, it can be comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's true of the person you're with too. So we're talking about the exploration. Yeah. Which is you can find some novelty, but sometimes, and and we did this recently. It's like, um, so do you want to have sex like in our in our pattern that we usually do? Yeah. And the answer was yes. Yeah. Because it was that's what we both wanted in that moment. And it was easeful. Yep. yep. And we didn't have to didn't be have to in the. Uh, yep. Um, and so that countered some of the burnout and and stuff that can get in the way. Right. So the the exploration is not the end all be all either. Right. There's nothing wrong with comfort sex, just yeah. like there's nothing wrong with macaroni and cheese. That's right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um. I think and if that works together for you, great. Yeah, go for it. If you want to get, cool, get new with be two good. dudes with food. Oh my God. Now I yes. want to go listen to Flight of the Concords. Yep. I when we're talking about toys, often people over rely on the introduction of a toy to to hold up um keeping things hot. So this is where I want to say toy is for me, introducing a toy is about introducing a conversation. Right. Hey, let's play with and this. Let's talk about it. Let's <clears throat> practice mm -hmm. using our words. And it's not just words. There's also nonverbal communication. There's also um, a whole host of sort of animalistic noises that happen. Um, and we want to use our pre -verbal. words. Pre-verbal words. Yeah. I mean, I'm all for all of that nonverbal and, and pre-verbal communication. And, uh, and use the you words. putting words on it so that you can replicate it later yeah. really helps. Well, so I a toy to... can be really helpful to start generating a new conversation, but don't use it in place of, if you just put the toy down on the bed, and this happens a lot with people's first impact toy, they first bring a riding crop or a little pest spanking paddle and they put it down and it, it, like somebody just takes a couple swats and then like, that's it. That's all that happens. Cause they were expecting the toy mm -hmm. to be to the erotic the... energy. It's not. It's it's the in between. It's, it's the, the conversation. It's the people. It. It's the thing. Yeah. And it's the story we're telling ourselves while it happens. Hopefully, the story we're telling each other while it happens. Ideally, uh, or at least if that's in my what way. you're into. I yeah. Um, I'm all about the words. You um, you mentioned so if you're having hot sex already, great. Talk about that too. And one of the reasons to talk about that is. What are you doing that's working? Yes. So that when it stops working, you'll remember what it was you did. And gratitude. Have the conversations and gratitude. And gratitude. Oh, yeah. um, so we do a weekly um, gratitudes and re uh, what do we call it? Celebrations. Uh, celebrations and, and recalibration. Recalibration. And in that celebration, just start naming stuff we're grateful for. And I intentionally, I don't think I would have, I don't think I have to be intentional about this because I think it would come up anyways, but I intentionally include things that I'm glad for about how we're having sex, how yeah. we're overlapping our erotic mm -hmm. pattern. And, and also because it's relevant for us, how I'm appreciating you honoring my autonomy, right? my independence, yeah. um, and my sexual independence. I like those things, being grateful for those things. And um, in a non-sexual atmosphere. So we usually do this at a coffee shop or out for a walk or something, you know, do be mindful of who you're chatting around, obviously, um, offering gratitude for your sexual, um, excitement and, yeah. and what's working in a non-sexual atmosphere. It, it now has entered the rest of your life right. and sex stops being this thing that's like boxed off into a time when we have sex and this Which happens all the time brings up the idea of simmering oh simmering simmering so, yeah. is such a great idea if, if you're like okay we're gonna have sex from 5 to 6 uh p.m apparently because we're second shift people i don't know why i picked 5 to 6 but, <laughs> 5 to 6 right at um, dinner. nice so yeah we're gonna we're gonna have sex during this are time. you thinking about mac and cheese sex now i'm, I'm kind of hungry <laughs> um so yeah that can work 
But what we have found, what I have found, and you've asked for, and I'm not that good at, is, yeah, if you're talking about sex outside of sex times, it builds up the erotic energy. I like the metaphor um, MC Tove uses um, from Sexy Bliss. Uh, she uses the metaphor of the crock pot. She's like, you know, you oh, turn yeah. it on in the morning. <laughs> you text throughout the day, little, little bits, yep. little simmers yeah. throughout the day so that when you come back together or, or, and so I, I date some people long distance. So that might be, um, there might be quite a bit of like little bits of text that keep the erotic thread, um, running and keep the, keep that crock pot at least on, on, on warm, <laughs> yeah. keep it turned on so that while, when you get into the spot where you can actually find 25 minutes for sex, you can actually have it. It's right there. The and energy you can enter into right it from surface. a place. Yeah. Um, and it just, it also just helps you cross the threshold. There is a, a sort of erotic threshold to cross. So there are a million ways to keep sex hot over the long term. We're, this is not going to be the last conversation you know. about it. Um, but if you have questions, please, or scenarios that you would like us to address anonymously, happy to. Email me at jolie at joliehamilton.com. And while you're listening, or now that you're finishing an episode, if you would just drop a few stars and a review on our on our podcast, that would be great because it would help other people find us and have hotter sex. And until then. Keep talking to each other. It's hot. Hey, everybody. So we've talked quite a bit about how to do relationships. But I know a lot of you would really like to get my eyes on your relationship specifically. It's so worth it. And yeah, that's a bit of a hard thing for me to do for everyone individually, unless you're actually working in my coaching program. But good news, I'm doing some free live trainings. Yay! Yay. Live that's, trainings. that's awesome. I mean, I get it all the time. I'm with you all the time. It's I get true. lots of training and and You are just in one so... big free live training. And oh, wait, I'm, you pay for it. Okay, maybe I pay for it a little, <laughs> but you don't have to. Okay, so I would love to, to have y'all click on over to my website, joliehamilton.com. And if you click on the tab that says work with Jolie, you're going to see my latest offering for a live training. These are 60 minute masterclasses in how we can relate better. I'm going to be covering topics like creative monogamy, like how to transition into consensual non-monogamy, if that's your thing. And I'm also going to be talking about something that is really in my wheelhouse and something that we don't talk about on this show as often as we might, which is how to have a completely kick-ass relationship that really empowers you to be your full CEO mm -hmm. power player self. Right. So in my other world, I do a lot of business coaching. So... Bring it on. Bring it on. And you've all here heard us talking about our relationship and you have heard how she has addressed all of our issues in our relationship and how we talk about it. And she will turn that attention on you. And it is amazing what you can learn. Well, thanks. And yeah, just jump on over. Love to see you in there. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton and Ken Hamilton. If you're enjoying our conversation, we would be so grateful if you would drop a rating and quick review so more people will be able to find us. And if you have questions or suggestions that you of things you'd like us to tackle, please send an email to jolie at joliehamilton.com. I'd love to hear them. Project Relationship, the entrepreneur's action plan for passionate, sustainable love is available on Amazon in Kindle, soft or hardcover versions. This book is a succinct, practical guide to improving your love life. I wrote Project Relationship to give you a set of quick action tools and conversation guides that can transform a mediocre relationship into a fabulous one. These tools are based not just on what Jolie learned in her studies, but on what we actually do to make our relationship thrive. Until next time, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news.